We love science so much here at Street Science. We teach kids about science and we do it in a really, really cool way. We're going to be teaching the science of fireworks. We're going to be working with liquid nitrogen, some amazing visual stuff. Let's ramp things up a little bit. Who likes fireworks? Oh. I'm going to try and shoot these cups off your head. Not by using magic or anything crazy, just by using science that we can't see. Can you guys see a liquid in there? Feel that dark patch in the bottom? That floor is red. Can we sneak in one more quick demo? We love science so much here at Street Science. Hello! And good morning to everybody tuning in from all over the country today. Science Steve with you, coming live to you guys from Street Science Headquarters on the north side of Brizzy. Street Science are a family-run, family-owned business, and we get excited about science education. So today is a pretty special day. A lot of you guys have been tuning in over the last few days thank you to those people who are sitting there in day three of our virtual classrooms our live digital broadcasts for those of you who are tuning in for the first time a very big welcome there's over 1300 of you in this room right now in fact there's probably over a couple of thousand people watching the broadcast live this morning because we're not just transmitting into your lounge rooms for those wonderful homeschoolers who are out there Shout out to you guys. We're not just transmitting into your bedrooms and your studies for those kids who are now studying from home due to the craziness that's going on in our world at the moment. But we're also broadcasting into schools. And of course, street science, what we do really well is we get kids excited about science normally at school. So to those teachers who are broadcasting us up onto the board, shout out to you guys and thank you. And g'day to all the kids out there too. Now, before I get started, we need something visual. We need something fun. So let's crack out some liquid nitrogen. I've been taking feedback on board from all the parents, all the teachers, all the kids who have been watching our first couple of broadcasts. One of the mums said, Science Steve, straight up, get something bubbling, get something fizzing. Let's get these kids excited. So let's do it. In my flask, I've got a little bit of water. The colour of my water today how would you describe it? Blue? Yeah, close up. In this room, it actually looks a little bit bluey green, maybe aqua. Yeah, nice greeny blue colour. Let's get some liquid nitrogen and pour it into the flask and see what it does. I'm going to grab the camera, shoot it down just for a second. You're not going to be able to see my face, but that doesn't matter. Let's get some super cold liquid nitrogen and add it to some nice hot blue water let's drop it in and <laughs> here we go we've got ourselves a cloud in the lab now the cloud here today i was talking to you guys on monday about these liquid nitrogen clouds that white stuff that's filling my lab is actually water in the form of little crystals of ice and some water vapour that's condensed so that we can actually see it. So just like the clouds in the sky here in Queensland today, don't know what the weather's doing all around the country or all around the world, wherever you're tuning in, but these clouds made from droplets of water, just like the clouds in the sky right here where you guys are. Pretty cool. All right. Plan of attack for today. We're going to be interactive. I don't want to stand here talking at you guys for the next half hour. 
So let's get interactive. I'm going to teach you guys about some of the tools that are available to you guys to interact with me today and to interact with each other in our interactive classroom. So first thing we've got is a chat room. The chat room today is going to be moderated by the lovely Kim, who's sitting uh, in front of her computer. We can turn that chat room on and off, depending on how well you guys use it. The other day, we had some kids who were at home watching these science videos, and a couple of those kids thought it was a good idea just to press a letter and hit enter a few times. And that's really frustrating and annoying to people like me. So kids, if you're in front of the computer, don't spam it use that chat room really well. If you want to send information to me and my team of scientists, you can use that facility if it's turned on. If Kimmy doesn't like what she's seeing in there, she's going to turn it off and you lose the privilege. So use it wisely. Number two. Oh, also with that, if you want to hide the chat room, if it is turned on and it's distracting you because so much stuff is going past you, because we do have nearly 1,500 people in our broadcast today, what you can do if you're on a laptop, which most of you guys are, I know not everyone, but most of you are, there's a little tab on the side, probably over that side of your screen maybe, little red tab, three dots in it. You can click that and it'll hide that whole section. So then you can focus on the cool science going on in our lab today. All right, the other thing I wanna introduce you guys to is our poll feature. I'm gonna click publish and on your screen about now, is a poll. It's going to ask you a question, where are you tuning in from today? And all you guys got to do is click a button. I'm really interested to see where you guys are based because we're based in Queensland, Southeast Queensland, but we're broadcasting all around the country. And we want to encourage as many people from all over the place to be tuning in. At the moment, initially, as you guys start tapping away, a couple down in Victoria, lots in New South Wales, heaps in Queensland, which is cool. So a lot down the east coast of Australia, but not a lot down the west coast of Australia. So we'll have to get the information out to those guys um, and let them know that these broadcasts are happening so that they can tune in. I'm going to let that poll run for a few minutes and uh, then I'll publish the results so you guys can see it as well. All right, um, let's kick things off with something that you guys can do at home. Today's episode, just by the way, we've got a really special guest, a good mate of mine, Rafa, I refer to him, but, but uh, Raphael is uh, what his mum probably calls him. He is a wastewater, or he has a background anyway, PhD, a doctorate in wastewater engineering. So one of the questions that I had was when I flushed the toilet after doing a number two, where does all that beautiful nutrient-rich waste go. You know what I'm talking about? You do a poo, you do a whiz, you wipe yourself down, you flush. Where's it go? Our man, Rafa, is going to be able to track it and tell us a little bit about some of the scientific processes that go on on the other end um, before it's turned into a liquid that can be released back into the environment, which is pretty interesting stuff. So if you guys have got questions and the chat room's open, you're more than welcome to drop a few questions in there. Just do your best to keep it appropriate. I know it's a, a pretty cool topic, but just do your best to keep those questions appropriate and use the right language, please, guys. All right, our poll, let's close it off. 87% of you guys are tuning in from Queensland, which is where we're based, so that makes a lot of sense. Fair few down in New South Wales, Victoria's got a few and no one um, through the rest of the country. All good, all right. Bit of DIY science. Kids, I need you to ask mum and dad to get something really important from the shops tonight. You may have it lying around the house. I'm really hoping there's no shortage of this because we'll have a bigger problem in society if we can't get our hands on these. I'm talking about Skittles. I'm not talking about the sour ones, they're disgusting. I'm not talking about those weird smoothie flavors. I'm talking about original fruit Skittles. They're my favorite candy. And I need you guys to ask mum and dad for a pack. You don't need a massive family size pack. You just need a pack of Skittles, right? Tell them that Science Steve said you need some, all right? So that we can do some science experiments and explore the properties of candy. 
So, here's what you do. If you can get your hands on some candy, Skittles work really well. The other lollies that are really good, they end up a little bit gross, but they work really well are also M&Ms, right? So Skittles or M&Ms, that's what you need to start with. Let me take you guys down to my tray. All right, down on my table, let me straighten her up. I've got a plate, just a normal white plate. You can see there's a bit of a groove at the bottom and then it kicks up on a bit of an angle. So just a white plate straight out of the kitchen. We're not gonna be using any dangerous materials here today. So I do have safety glasses on, but I'm working out of a street science lab. And to be honest with you, there's some pretty dangerous stuff here. So I need to stay safe. I'm gonna grab some candy. I'm gonna do my very, very best not to eat them, all right? Let's get uh, some candy in my tray. Then I'm going to grab a few different colors and I'm going to place them strategically around my plate. As I place my candy on the tray, I'm just gonna spread the colors out a little bit. And as I place them, oh, there's a green one, mad. Can you see the little letters printed on these? You wanna make sure that the letters are facing up. That is super important. I'm just gonna scatter them around the place. Another green one opposite there. Beauty, a nice orange one. All right, cool. So I've got my Skittles and I've placed them onto a white tray. You can use a plastic plate or you can use a uh, ceramic plate like I have today. Let's get those ones out of there. I'll have to eat them after my show. All right, next thing we need, a bit of dihydrogen monoxide. Have you guys got some dihydrogen monoxide hanging around the house? I'm trying to think where you can find it. Rafa, where are we going to get some dihydrogen monoxide from for those kids playing along at home? Uh, I reckon test out the tap. Ah, straight out of the tap. You guys call it water. All right, I know what you're talking about. A little bit of water, dihydrogen monoxide. I've got some water in a jug. I'm going to pour some water into the middle of that tray, and I'm going to observe the properties of these candies and see what happens as they start to get wet. Now, Rafa's going to make that camera go down for me. Watch this. Down it goes, nearly there, beautiful. All right, I'm going to very carefully pour the water in. Remember, when I placed the lollies, the little letters were pointing upwards. I'm pouring it in gently, so I don't want to disturb things too much. All right, in it goes. Poured a bit of water in, and now I just stand back and I observe. Now, I haven't actually got a dish that's deep enough to complete this whole activity, which is really cool, because you guys will be able to do it and you'll get additional results that I'm getting. Okay, immediately as I place the water into the dish, what I'm noticing is the outer coating of those lollies is starting to dissolve. Now that's a big word that just simply means it's breaking down into little pieces, the sugars are going into the water. As the sugars dissolve into the water, the dyes go with it. As the sugars start to disperse, so do the food dyes. So we can see the colour starting to move. It started right beside the candy, right beside those little Skittle lollies, and now it's starting to move away. In fact, it's bleeding away from the lollies in towards the middle of my tray. So just keep watching for a sec. You'll notice that some of the candies are losing that colour because the outer layer is dissolving and the food dyes are starting to creep. Now my red over here is going the furthest. He's taking up a lot of space, which is cool. Greeny over here is not taking up a lot. They're finding their way in. What we find is we get some colour mixing. So between my orange and my red here, some of the colours have actually gone into each other. Some of the yellows and the greens are starting to go into each other here as they make their way in. If you go and get M&Ms, we get these really clear divisions of colour because the dyes from the different coloured M&Ms, they don't mix together. But for the Skittles, they do, which is really interesting. Now, if you make this deep enough so that the lollies are fully submerged so the candy is totally underneath the water really important that you don't bump it or get rough with it make sure your little brother doesn't bump the table what we can see 
is the color mixing, but those little letters on top, you know, the S on the Skittles and the M on the M&Ms, those letters, little white letters will not dissolve. The ink we use is insoluble in water. That means it won't dissolve in water. So as the outer layer dissolves, the little S's start to come free and they float around on the surface of your water. So you get these little floating S's. If you've got M and M's, you get little floating M's. If you mix up your Skittles and your M and M's, you're gonna get S and M's floating all over the top of the surface of the water, which is so cool, right? And you guys are gonna be able to do this. Now, the really interesting thing, as we watch these candies, these little lollies start to dissolve, it makes me think about what's actually in them. It doesn't make me wanna eat them. <laughs> it doesn't look particularly tasty at the moment. In fact, if you use M&Ms and you leave it for about five minutes, once the outer coating dissolves and the colors all bleed away and the M's start to rise to the top, we notice that some of the fats start to leach out of the chocolate and they start to disperse all over the surface and it looks disgusting. And they're the candies that we love to shove in our face around Easter time. And it makes me think about the nutritional benefits of lollies and how good this stuff is for our bodies, which is a really interesting thought because everyone tells us we need fruit and veggies and all the good stuff, proteins and carbs in the right balances. But it seems that we, as kids, I'm a big kid, let's be honest, we love eating lollies, but there's not a whole lot of nutritional value in there. Lots of sugar that gets us energy, immediate energy that makes us want to run around, but overall, not particularly good for us. Small amounts, no dramas. M&Ms or Skittles, right? That's what's on the poll right now. For you guys, you can use either. I would love to know your personal preference because I've only used, what, 10 or so of these Skittles, which means I'm going to have to go and eat the rest of that box. So you've got the opportunity. If you don't want to tell mum and dad that Science Steve said to buy Skittles, feel free to tell them that you need a bag of M&Ms, right? And that's probably a good idea because mum or dad are going to enjoy eating those as well. So you've got the poll there. Feel free to fill it out. What are you going to use? M&Ms or Skittles? It is totally up to you. A little bit of DIY science that you guys can do at home. Now, I'm quickly going to hijack the screen. I'm going to share my screen with you, and I'm going to take you to a website. This website is streetscience.com.au, and there's a very important reason I'm going to take you there. Let me share my screen, and I'll keep chatting with you. Screen share is on. Take you to the homepage. The reason I'm going to take you here is because I've just run you through a little activity you can do at home. But on our website, we have a tab up the top. There you go. You can see those tabs right up the top. We see experiments. If you click on that, it's going to open up a new page. The M&Ms and the Skittles activity that I just did, it is listed on here. All the instructions. So when mum calls you up from work later and says, hey, what do you need me to pick you up on the way home? You can say, I've got an activity up on the web that I want to do tonight and show you. There it is, the science of sweets. It's down the bottom. You can also make a thunderstorm, make your own rocket fuel. How good does that sound? Build your own CO2 rockets. We did an activity yesterday. We had a special guest, Tim O'Shea, who was a medicinal, he has a background in medicinal chemistry, right? And he showed us how to make our own hand sanitizer, taught us all about viruses and bacteria. So the recipe's up there for you guys too, all right? The experiments link, check it out a little bit later on. Um, heaps of resources for you, including the science of sweets. All right, going to get you guys back because we've got a very, very special guest in our lab, a good mate of mine, Raphael. Dr. Rafa, Rafa, he answers to all sorts of things. He's going to come and join us. In fact, Rafa, I'm going to get this mess that I've made of my candy out of the way. I'm going to resist eating. Oh, in fact, Rafa made something. Can't get in here. Yeah, get yeah, in here. Yeah, quick, yeah, quick. Yeah. All right. Rafa, quick. Give a wave to everyone out there. Okay, There's a lot of people in the room. Yeah. Before I introduce you properly and before we get excited about poop and wheeze and all the good stuff, right, I'm going to take everyone down here because 
I just bumped the tray. As I bumped the tray, the colours mixed, and some of the little S's off my Skittles have floated to the top. They are there. All right. Awesome. Quick, get in here, guys. An exclusive. Oh, are they going to be able to see it? Oh, there, there's one right there. Get, get his, and this one here. Let me, let me bump it. Oh, man. Can we see it floating? It might be hard to see. So this one here is just coming off the candy. And then there's one. Can I bump him in? Yeah, nice work. I think we're starting oh, there, to see there he goes. floating. He's floating. Nice. There he goes. He's heading over the colored stuff. So you're going to see him. A little bit of contrast. That little S. So cool. Now, I really, really, really want to lick that finger because it's covered in candy. But Rafa would have been a good idea. No, 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 no. Wash out your hands. I tell you what. Nice work. I'll grab my hand sanitizer, mate, because I know you've good got way. some pretty cool stuff to tell everyone. Now, yeah. we're not shaking hands in the street no, science labs at the moment, mate. So mm. elbow bumps. Welcome, Done. mate, today. Um, now, Rafa, you've got a really colourful past, right? And as yeah. soon as I heard about the cool stuff that you've done and where you've been in life, mate, I thought there's so many kids out there who are tuning in at the moment who want to be scientists when they grow up, right? And that's what I love about it. Now, science. I'm a scientist. I'm an environmental scientist, and I love my plants and animals and the way they nice. interact with each other. And I get frustrated when humans go and make a mess of the environment. But you, mate, wastewater engineering. Indeed. All right. That's First right. of all, can you tell us what that means? All right. What it means, it's all about the wastewater that's coming through the drain, but also the toilet. You know, all that peas and woo, um, peas and poos. <laughs> Whiz and poos. Whiz and poos, exactly. And even the paper, the toilet paper, ah. all the three peas that goes in there. Hang on, what, are, what are the three peas? P. P. Poo. Poo. Paper. Paper. And they're the yeah. only three things that are meant to go down a toilet. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That yeah, 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 that's it. And they're actually traveling and they're not going straight to the environment. That would be polluting mm. and that would be disgusting. So some, we need some of the things that I've made that I've flushed down the toilet, I do not want them released yeah. straight in the environment. No, no, that, well. that would be disgusting. So, yeah. So what happens? So what happens? It's actually traveling through in pipes, in big pipes, all the way across the city. And it gets to a treatment plant. And that treatment pl plant has lots and lots of different processes to remove all the things that's in there. Because we're probably talking not just um, nutrient-rich physical waste here, mm. are we? Like, we do wheeze and yeah. poos, and there's that physical stuff there. But there's probably, like living things in there as well yeah, definitely that yeah yeah that's true and we actually help and use that living things to help break it down Ooh. so all the poos and the wheeze they have little bit of elements as you were saying like ammonium and nitrogen and carbon that we want to make sure that we release only slowly to the environment otherwise we get too much of it and then we get algae bloom or ah. things like this but we use the bacteria that are inside and some oxygen and then they get together and the bacteria eat all of it and they poop out they literally poop out some nutrients that goes for the plants and the plants can grow and grow and grow and get better so would it be a good idea for me just to bypass that whole process if it just if if you've got stuff and a process that turns my poop my pee and the toilet paper into this stuff that makes plants grow why don't i just poop in the yard that's an excellent question well what happens is it's also sanitized once it's gone into the wastewater treatment plant it's breaking down first and when you go straight to the yard, it's not breaking down. Mm. So all that process takes a little bit of time. At the process plant, it goes faster. It runs like a madman. It's been trained bacteria. They're pumping up iron and they get in there and they break it down. In your yard, it's happening so slowly that you've got viruses and things that you don't want to be hanging around. Your pets, little brothers and sister, mm, not a great idea. Yeah, I'd imagine my dog, if I did that anyway, he would dig it up and he would roll it up because yeah. he's that kind of dog. Yeah. He's disgusting. Nah. And he wouldn't be allowed in the house. That's it. He's not allowed in the house anyway, kids. All right. Um, so there must be a process, Raph, right? Mm -hmm. So 
let's say we're using um, our toilets appropriately, we're doing our wees, yeah. we're just using a couple of squares of toilet paper, yeah. cleaning ourselves up, we flush it, we go and wash our hands, mm -hmm. right? Question that I've seen pop up, we flush our waste, right? Our wees and our poos yeah. and our paper. Yeah. When we go and wash our hands in the sink, does that waste water end up in the same place? And the shower water, when we're washing ourselves at the yeah. end of the day, when we're dirty and we're stinky, does that water end up in the same place or is that water just heading out into the drain at the front of my house? Great because question. The kids don't know. They yeah, would yeah. love to know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. So most houses are all rigged up and every water is going into the same place, into the same pipe. So what's coming from the sink, your hand wash basin, the laundry, um, the shower, the toilet, all of it goes into the same treatment plant, into the same pipe and traveling. Some houses have a little bit of a different system. Some laundry have their own water going into the yard. Oh, but they've gray got, water. Yeah, gray water. gray water. That's right. Very cool. So that wouldn't have the biological waste in there That's as well, it. would it? Okay, interesting. So I remember when I was a little, well, I'm still a little fella, yeah. when I was a lot younger, yeah. my dad was digging a hole in the yard. I can't remember what he was doing. And he busted this big orange clay pipe and he called it the, 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 sewer? the sewer. Is that right? Yeah. Would that be the pipe that's leading away yeah. from our house? Yeah, yeah, most <gasps> definitely. Because it stank. It was yeah, disgusting. It's disgusting. And actually, nowadays, they're replacing that clay because there had been some accident with that, or not accident, but bursting and stuff. So it cost a fair bit of money to replace that. So mm. now at the moment it's changing and it's a proper pipe that you can't just break with a shovel. That would make a yeah. lot of sense. All right. So the sewer is taking or the sewerage lines are taking the wastewater from our laundries, bathrooms, toilets, yep. kitchen. Kitchen as oh, well. Yeah. Very cool. Kitchen waste as well to this sewerage treatment plant. That's so it. my neighbor's house, my house, That's all it. those pipes are coming together and they're taking it away to the That's wastewater it. treatment plant. All right. So when it gets there. When right, it gets I'm yeah. fascinated yeah, to yeah, know. It's awesome. I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's my right. thing. It's, what happens? I guess you talk to about it. So there are some floaty bits, things that actually are too big to be eaten up by the bacteria. So there is a physical treatment which means it's a greed that just flush out and removes all of the things that are too heavy and too big to flow through so all of this is then removed into sieves if you want like big sieves and smaller and smaller until you've got only liquid there all that big stuff is then mushed up together and can be used again but the liquid goes with bacteria Mm -hmm. And bacteria there, they need some oxygen. They like us, they're quite good, they need some oxygen and they need food. And the food is actually poo, wee, and all of that. Oh. And they're eating it and they poop out all the good nutrients. So this aer aeration or the oxygen and the nutrients coming together with the bacteria gives us some good stuff. Mm. And then that's all diluted out and can be released to the environment safely. Right. So it's diluted down to a yeah. point where the nutrients are of a low enough level that we can then release that into the That's environment it. and it's not going to overload the local creek with too many nutrients. Because if it. we did, if we were just breaking that down, getting rid of the nasty stuff and releasing it in the environment, I can imagine that all the beautiful nutrients that are coming out, the plants would go crazy. Yeah, they would. And the algae would go yeah. nuts. Yeah, exactly. And the algae, they do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis mm. produce some oxygen, but at night, there is no mm. light, no sun. So that's when they consume all the oxygen. And then there is no oxygen inside the water. And it starts to be dangerous for living creatures like fish. That's interesting. Can we do another episode, guys, on algal blooms? Because as an environmental scientist, I know a bit about what happens on the yes. other side of that. And you got the knowledge about what's feeding those nutrients in. We should do a whole special yeah. on algal blooms because that's a big deal in a lot of places around the country. Cool. All right, Rafa. So bacteria eat my waste. That's fascinating. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit more? 
Oh, yes, I can. Most definitely. So, Is there a special type of bacteria that they place into those ponds? A, excellent question. So it would be great to have specialized bacteria, but it's really hard at the same time because we've got waste and we've got different environments. So here in Brisbane, we're quite hot and humid, so we've got specific bacteria that are good for this environment. In, Bris um, in Melbourne, it's colder, so you've got a bit of different bacteria, so depending on the environment. But what happens is you can select bacteria by giving them the right food, yeah, the specific yeah, yeah. type of food. So only the bacteria that have the same food that comes in every day would be the one flourishing and they'll be the one that are selected. It's part of the natural process of selection for good bacteria. So cool. So cool. Yeah. All right. Enough talk, right? Yeah. So. You've brought a couple of things along today. That you want to show everyone, right? No, this I is will. the cool stuff, right? You've gotten through the theory. Well done. Now let's have a little bit of fun, all right? Because I can see yeah. some weird stuff that Raf has brought along yeah. today. So, what I'm going to do, we'll crouch down a little bit because we're yeah, yeah. all dudes anyway, cool, right? Cool. And I'll lower the camera a little bit for you. Yeah. How's awesome. that? All right. Great. Great. All right, guys. So, as I was coming in, I just bumped into this. And that's a nappy. Hey, hang, on, hang on. How did you bump into it, Rafa? Well, I've got to admit, um, I maybe went for a bit of a scavenge for it. Right. Because you don't have kids, do you? No, I so... don't have kids, but so... I went to look for one, knocked to a couple of neighbors, yeah. see if they had any. No luck. No. Nah. Now I had a look in a couple of bins, wash my hands afterwards. Of course. Carefully. And then brought that over. And I reckon it's. Chuck a butt up. Well, Fool. I have kids, Raf, right? <gasps> They're both a little bit older than uh, the nappy yeah, age, right. right? But I know as a dad that you don't have nice, clean nappies lying around, mate, wrapped up tight like that. So uh, maybe I shouldn't have brought it in. Too late now, mate. There's like All a right. lot of people oh, watching. It's, it's live. Okay. Game on, buddy. All right, game on. Let's have a look. Let's see what we have here. Are you ready for this, Steve? Not really. Oh. Oh. Look, my lucky day, it's a, just a clean one. Is it? How clean is it? Sniff, sniff no, test. Sn really? Yeah. <laughs> sniff no. Test. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's oh. fine. It's fine. It's a clean one. Come on, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't right. go dumpster it's diving. All right. It's all right. All right. But what I wanted to show you is inside there, you've got a bit of powder. Now, here is some cotton. And if we shake it, we've got a bit of powder. Now here at Street Science, we've spent some time and baked, baked, baked the powder that's inside there. And we've changed its chemical properties. And I thought I could show you what it looks like. So let me brought over. I've got a fair bit of it. I've put it all the way here. And that's what it looks like. So it's a solid. Powder. So th this powder comes out of a nappy. Is it, that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. And it's been specially cooked, so it has different properties. Cool. I reckon I know the name of this stuff because I've come across it before. Oh, uh, yeah. Because being an environmental dude, yeah. I get excited about the plants and no, all that sort of no. stuff. Sodium polyacrylate. Is that right. The stuff? Yes, that's it. Yes. That's sodium polyacrylate right cool. there. Now, awesome. at the hardware store, you can actually get your hands on a similar product. It's not the same stuff though, Rafa. Yeah. Sodium polyacrylamide. It's like it's long lost cousin, right? And it's sold as a yeah. soil wetter. Ah, right. Yeah, soil yeah, yeah. wetting agent. Nice. It's like a little crystals almost. Yeah. Yeah, similar mm -hmm. stuff. Sorry, yeah, yeah. as you were saying. That's all good. And that stuff is actually really good at absorbing water. And I thought I could show you what it looks like. So let me get my water bottle and I'll have a quick drink and put some of that in here. All right. So, all right. Hold on. So we've we've had a look. Cool. Now we've got our sample of water. It looks like it looks like we mate. Yeah, I, I might have had some vitamins in there. Not quite <laughs> sure. All right. Let's have a look. What happened? Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. It just it has totally changed. absorbed. In fact, 
Give me some of this. Give oh, yeah, yeah. Water. Let's try it. Green water as well. Look at that. Oh, it's actually layered. That is so nice. cool. Nice. The colors haven't mixed. No, let's, that. let's see. Oh, oh yes. Nice. It turned into a gel. It's so, good. just just confirming, that powder is the same stuff that comes out of a nappy. That, that's right. Cool. So, for the kids at home, if you want to try this, number one, you've got to get your hands on a nappy. <laughs> yeah. A dirty one, a clean one. Clean one, definitely. Definitely a clean yeah, nappy, right? Definitely. Rip it down the side like Rafa's done. Pull the cotton wool out. Let me grab it out. Yeah. There you go. Pull it all out. Get your hands on a little clippy bag like this. Yep. Stick the cotton wool in. Zip it up. And shake it around. Yeah. yeah? Right. Because yep. I'm pretty sure as a nappy that that powder's mixed all through the cotton wool. So you've got to mm. shake it around yeah, and get yeah, it out. It and I've got some starting to form down in the bottom there, which is cool. Mm. Then you can tip that out and do it where doing. That's it. Cool. That's it. So it's a gel. It's a super absorbent. Yeah, poly. exactly. So yeah. it's good because like that baby's bottom is not wet all day long. Cool. We can <clears> make sure that they're clean and dry. And it looks really oh. disgusting. Yeah. That's really awesome. I love that stuff. Does it have a, uh, a point where I can't hold any more water? It, it, it will be at some point, but we well away from that. So that's about can I hold on to like 200 times its weight in, yeah, in, well, in water. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. It is. And so, probably gravity would just put it in first. All right. So, Raph, you, you've got another container, yeah. right? It looks exactly the same. It does. All right. So what's this? So this one... It's exactly the same, but it's been processed differently. So cooked for longer. Mm -hmm. So this time it will behave differently. And I wanted to show you what it behaves like. So should we have a look? Totally. So Get some. Do the same thing. What? So if we're comparing these two materials, right? Same stuff, still sodium polyacrylate. Yeah. What we want to do, we want to do a fair test. That's yeah. It. So we want to You're still right. be pouring some water out of your bottle, no, pour it in there and see what it does. And that's it. it. Essentially follow the same procedure. That's yeah? it. And yeah. then we can compare it's, them that's and exactly. we can say, well, the difference is the powder itself. Yeah, cool. That's so right. I probably uh, messed that up by pouring some green stuff on top. That's all right. We'll, pour, right. we'll pour some green stuff on it afterwards. All right. All right. In three, two, one. Oh, I made there a mess. Goes. <gasps> oh, look, wow. Look at that. Tip it, grows. tip it upside down. Does it? No, oh, it, it doesn't, doesn't hold. There. That's amazing. All right, cool. So the exact same product, yeah, processed a little bit differently. Different. That's right. Exact same materials though, processed differently, so cooked a bit different. Yeah, has very different observable features. That stuff compared to that stuff, same it's material, a... made differently, acts really differently. In fact, mm. that man, that looks like snow. It does. Well. I'm glad you mentioned it. When they do movies, yep. they actually sometimes need some snow, but it's not a snowy day. No. So they use this stuff to make some fake snow. Cool. And that would be, I'd suggest you could probably add a little bit more water to it. Yeah. I feel like it's going to handle it. It's still growing, yeah. in fact. It's, it's just changing color. Oh, look at it go in the middle. Nice. This would be, if you fluff it up enough, it'd be like 99% water. Because there was only yeah. a little bit of powder, a lot of moisture That's going it. in there. Yeah. That's so cool. Is this, this is interesting. Now, this is the teacher in me coming out, Rafa. Yep. So sorry if I stump you, right? All right? Some kids out there. In fact, Kim, I know you're moderating the uh, the room today. Can you create a poll for me, right? Watch this technology work, guys. We're creating a poll. Is this a chemical change that we've just mm -hmm. observed or is it a physical change? All right, Great so idea. let's stand up while that poll goes yep. live. We're going to stand up and everyone can jump on and vote. A chemical change or a physical change? We'll stand up and I'll explain the difference and then we'll actually yep. see what it is. All right, oh. so you can adjust the camera for me. Yeah, I will do that. I'm going to make sure that poll's going up. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get the poll up, mate. Yeah, get do it Do you going. want to explain the difference between a physical change and a chemical change? Yeah, I can okay. do that. Yeah, yeah. So a physical change would be something that has some change that is immediately um and hold on let me let me let me think through that correctly so um let's go through a chemical change chemical change is actually when things are changing there hold on help me out okay, okay cool. I'm, I'm, I'm sweet I'm man stumbling i've on got it. an education degree behind yeah, you, yeah, I know yeah, this yeah. one you ready so physical change reversible 
river. Right. Right. Yes. That's Chemical it. change creates a new material right or a new product so it's different you're making something new you've got chemical structures changing and there's a few things we can identify yeah. as a chemical change things like a change in temperature production of a gas um sometimes an odor being released yeah. all, all those sorts yeah, of things yeah, a few yeah. more and we can go awesome. deeper into that next week if yeah. you want to you know investigate some of the real cool science that we teach in school so physical change this is the key for primary school kids physical change is reversible and you're not making something new a chemical change is irreversible you can't easily turn it back into the stuff you started with cool yeah. it's making cool. something new yeah. bloody hard work to turn it back into yeah. the first yeah. so here it is right and the poll's going live i'm going to give it another moment is it a physical change can we reverse this possibly because we've tipped water into the powder yeah. or have we made something new yeah. so I'm going to stop the poll, Rafa. Yeah. Do you want to release the results for everyone? Yeah. And done. So most of you are thinking that it's a chemical change, which means it's irreversible. And some of you are thinking it's a physical change where it's reversible. Cool. Well, let me break it to you. It is a physical change. Yes. Because we can evaporate all of the water that's in there and it turns back into its same powder that we had at the beginning cool so if i leave this on a tray just yeah. break that down for me if you're saying it's a physical change yeah. it's got to be reversible yeah. so we started with powder we added water to it. it so to reverse it i'm going to have to separate that into the powder and the water That's right it. so yeah. if i leave it on a tray the water will evaporate, evaporate. out of it yeah <gasps> It'd probably take a few days yeah, to happen. It would totally it would. happen. It the water evaporates out of it, and that's going to shrink down. Just going to be like the reverse of what happened before. Yeah. Shrink down into the that's powder, it. and the and water's then, off into the atmosphere. And then guess what? What, what? happened if I add some water? To the powder, it's going to grow again. That's it. And then evaporate and shrink down and do it again and that's again. It. And it, oh, man, this stuff is so good. That's How do I get my hands on it, Rafa? Well, you've got just a shop that just opened and you've got some of that in the diy science, science kit. kit all right this That's stuff it. is really hard to get your hands on sodium polyacrylate in this form so the first form you can get that powder out of nappies no worries you can get your hands on that easily mm. this stuff is amazing to play with it feels incredible right does. um the only way you're going to be able to get this stuff is through our shop, right? On the side of your screen, there is a little link there. I don't know how you do it. You probably just click on, click on offers. I think it'll take you through to our shop. We launched a shop today because during our shows, we're going to be using different materials yeah. and we want you guys to be able to get your hands on them. And a lot of people aren't going out to the shops at the That's moment. It. So you're not going to be able to go shopping and just ask mum to go and grab this stuff for you. So we can get it online, right? So we've launched a street science shop which has lots of science equipment. There is one kit there. It's the very first item. I think it's yeah. about 30 yeah. bucks. And it has lots of different items in there. It comes in a little street science nice. bag. Let me hold it for has, you. Has it got the uh, snow tube in there? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So there you go. You've got a couple of serves of that snow powder in there for you guys to use. Remember, it's reversible. You've got to make a choice whether you want a slime kit or a crystal growing kit. Highly recommend those. They are so cool. You get a bouncy ball kit where you make a couple of bouncy balls. Oh, you get your street science Just safety like glasses. Yeah. There's a thermochromic pencil in there and some activity sheets. That's cool. All right. So that's up online if we yeah. need to get our hands on it. All right, cool. Rafa, you've made a mess on my table. That's totally yeah. cool because Dang. I totally appreciate you coming along and hanging out with these people out there. So um, what we might do um, later on this Arvo, yeah. right? Let's yeah. say I'm thinking, are you hanging around for most of the day today? Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, working through the day. Yeah. Let's say it about um three o'clock yeah right yeah. three o'clock on our facebook page yeah. let's do a facebook live cool. you and me awesome. we'll go through those questions that people yeah, have yeah. typed I've in seen in their a chat couple room, of questions right? that i'm excited to answer yeah if the chat room has been closed kim our moderator is going to open it up just five minutes so people yeah. can ask some questions about cool. wastewater and poos and wheeze yeah. and all the three all the good stuff um how about we jump on yeah. and we'll grab some of those questions and we'll do a Facebook Live yeah, straight off the sounds, Street Science Facebook good. page, yeah. right, mate? Until then, give us a bump, mate. You get All out right. of here. You have a good day, man. Same. And I'll hang out with these guys for a few more minutes. All right. Did you enjoy that? How good was that? A real wastewater engineer. He's got a PhD in wastewater engineering. It's so cool to have live 
in our street science lab today. And Rafa works for us at Street Science. Um, he's a science communicator these days, which is cool. Just like Timo yesterday, we've got lots of scientists that work here for me to introduce you to. So we're going to wind up in a sec, guys. We've been going for 45 minutes, and I can't believe there's still a 1,000 of you who are still tuned in who we haven't lost. So thank you very much for being a part of our live science classroom today. We're going to run these at 10 o'clock every morning for as long as we need to. You may have noticed today that we're in a brand new room in a new um, virtual classroom. We've upgraded all of our infrastructure because we have been inundated with people who want to join in and be a part of this really cool educational program. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be joined by Jess the one and only, one of our original street scientists. She is back. She hasn't been around street science for a little while. She went off and had a baby, but she's coming back to hang out with me and you guys tomorrow. And word on the street, we're going to be lighting things on fire. So there's going to be, uh, I don't even know what she's bringing along, but there's going to be a number of different fuels that we're going to work our way through. Some uh, fossil fuels, hydrocarbons, alternate fuels, um, Really cool, man. There's going to be so much learning in there and lots of fireballs and stuff. And because we're in the studio, in our lab, we can kill the lights so we can see it all really well. So that's going to be happening tomorrow at 10 a.m. Next week, we're going to launch a subscription service for you guys. So if you're loving what we're doing, we're going to have smaller classes. So instead of having a 1,000 people in here and me not getting a chance to see all of your questions, we'll drop that down to 20 to 30 kids at a time. One of my street science staff will be in here running a classroom to slow things down for you and really dive deeper into the cool stuff that we talk about in the mornings. So you'll be able to uh, sign up for that and we'll make it cheap as chips for you parents as well because I know people are uh, having some pretty tough times at the moment. And, uh, and we'll be running a heap of other stuff. Check out that street science shop. It launched overnight. We've never done it before. We've been trading for eight years and we finally launched our online shop because you guys have been saying, Science Steve, we want some cool gear to get our hands on to do with the kids at home. So we'll keep working in the background, developing some new products for you guys, broadcasting to you live. Thank you to all those people who've been making donations as well. It definitely helps a small business like us stay afloat and keep providing this cool stuff. It's the most important thing to me, to be honest with you, is to keep you kids engaged and excited and having fun. And I want to make sure that we're around on the other side of this craziness to uh, get out and work with you guys. So thank you very much. I'm going to leave you with a video. Don't forget, kids, ask mum and dad for some Skittles or some M&Ms so you can do some science and whatever's left over, um, you can go and eat. Wash your hands often. Use hand sanitizer if you can't get near a sink so we're not spreading those germs. Big thank you to Rafa. What a dead set legend. Um, we're going to come back at uh, 2 o'clock this Arvo and do a really similar session. Tomorrow's going to be different. Friday will be different again. So make sure you register so you can get along. And our, our rooms now hold up to 5,000 people at a time. So spread the word. Let's get everyone excited about street science. We're going to finish off with a little video. Have the best day, guys. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Hi there, Steve here from Street Science and today... What we have here is some sodium polyacrylate. I have brought an actual rocket. This stuff is amazing and the most dangerous gas I can carry with me. You're going to see a beautiful reaction happen.